good pod guide good good pod guide pod guide this is the good pod guide where you'll be pleased to hear i do no more singing instead i lauren windle will guide you through the abundance of podcasts out there to help you hone in on your next obsession have come across some famous people in my time, you know, and get ready to send someone out to the shed to dig out the wheelbarrow because you're going to need something to store the names I'm about to drop. Okay. I have chased Ricky Gervais down the street doing the office dance. Mm, 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 mm. He was coming out of Capitol Radio building just above the Yates's. Many a good time in that Yates's. I don't think it is a Yates's anymore, but it definitely used to be. And he was with a really tall bloke who I think on reflection is was Stephen Merchant, but I don't know because Stephen Merchant wasn't really a name then. So we chased him. Then on another occasion, but actually around the same era of my life. So I was a young teenager now. I waited outside. <laughs> I'm actually not proud of this one. Waited outside Daniel Radcliffe's school with some of my friends. There was probably about 10 of us. And this was way back in the day when he'd only filmed one of the Harry Potter films. So he still actually went to school in person. And we had all drawn lightning bolts on our heads in eyeliner. We were waiting for him to come out of the school. And he did come out. He was a little bit late. We thought it might have been Quidditch practice. He took one look at us and bolted down the street and jumped on the back of an open back bus. And we did chase him, but we didn't catch him. I don't actually know what we thought we were going to do when we caught him because it's we weren't like a gang or a mob. We were just like dumb school kids. So we weren't going to do anything bad. But I think when someone runs, you just chase. So that's what happened. I'm quite slow and wasn't really the leader of that pack. So it was definitely at the back. So I didn't even get close to I wasn't even in touching distance. I don't know what we thought we'd do if we had caught up with him. I have a feeling there would have been hugs. Possibly we would have bundled him. Or maybe just asked for autographs because this was even, oh my gosh, this is really dating me. But this is before phones had cameras. This is when we all still played Snake and put interchangeable faces on our 3210s. Mine was Tigger. So yeah, so there really wasn't much you could do other than I suppose get an autograph. Anyway, poor guy came out of school as a 12 year old and, and just bolted. And I think I probably would have too if I'd seen a a mob of older kids with lightning bolts drawn on their head. Anyway, on to another famous person I've met. And at least this time, I didn't chase her down the street. This is the lovely Katie Piper, who I've come across professionally as a journalist when I'm meeting people, when I'm doing things. Katie Piper is a presenter, a writer, and the founder of a charity that supports Burns victims and their families. She herself, for those who don't know her story, was a victim of a horrific acid attack back in, I think, 2008. And she has like courageously managed to put her life back together from there and um, has done a lot to help other people in similar circumstances. This is her podcast and she interviews other people about their inspiring stories. And those can be people who've overcome some sort of trauma or disaster themselves, or they can be, you know, famous people like athletes or writers or some of her celeb friends. Guests include Craig David, Carol Baskin of Tiger King fame, Michelle Visage, Laura Whitmore, writer Elizabeth Day. There's one that I listened to that I just, I really liked, which was Dame Jessica Ennis. And she spoke about how she became an athlete and how her parents just thought it was like a bit of fun for her as an after school activity until they realized like just how talented she was. On the author side, you know, she's got one, Katie's got one up there with Adam Kay, who is always such a great laugh. And I just think you can't go wrong with the comedian when it's these interview shows. I actually even went to go and see his show during, uh, the pandemic, he did a one man socially distanced show and I went to see it in London. It was so good. It was so good. I really rate him. If you're in need of a big old confidence boost though, I feel like the Paloma Faith episode is definitely the one that you should dig into. 
Much with all of these sort of interview-based podcasts, it's probably a good idea for you to start with the people who you are most keen to hear from. Bear in mind, though, that whilst there are some famous names, if you scroll particularly to the early episodes, there are some incredibly inspiring and remarkable stories of resilience and hardship there. And you may not actually recognize the name. So, for example, Denise Fergus, who is the mother of Jamie Bulger, or Johnny Benjamin, who attempted suicide on Waterloo Bridge but now dedicates his time to helping others. So don't necessarily go for the A-listers when you're picking out an episode to try. Episodes are 30 to 40 minutes, and there are 60 or so at the time that I recorded this review. This is an uplifting listen. Katie's got a really gentle way of relating to people. And crucially, she lets them talk and express themselves. And sometimes interviewers kind of make it a bit more about them but she doesn't fall into that trap this isn't just a podcast for her to talk about her story she really is there to listen the aim is to inspire and i think along with her guests she does a great job of that in the next episode i talk about sitcom friends a lot so pivot your way over and give it a listen For more info on The Good Pod Guide, visit our website www.goodpodguide.com or follow us at Good Pod Guide on Instagram and Twitter.